Thank you so much for checking out this free video. If you don't mind, please click like and subscribe. It's been a lot of talk about where Stephanie Vacker will sign. Will it be WWE? Will it be AEW? And now we looks like we know where that's going to be, as today she has departed both CMLL and New Japan Pro Wrestling. They both have announced that Vacker has departed, and she will also not be appearing at the joint promoted Fantastica Mania show on Friday in San Jose. She had a match against Juvia that she was supposed to have. Uh, it is very likely she's going to be signing with WWE. The Mexican publication record is reporting that she has. Uh, it says, quote, the Chilean wrestler will uh, be a new WWE superstar, thus, thus managing to take a big leap in her career, end quote. That's according to a translation there, this is not a fun thing to get into, uh, but I should note it because we did not note it, I don't believe, on this show in the lead up to Forbidden Door. But last March, it was reported that Vacker's former boyfriend, uh, Rogelio Reyes, who was working for AAA under the name of Quatrero, was accused of strangling Vacker at their home in Cuatumac, uh, section of Mexico City. Pictures revealed handprints around her neck. He was jailed on a few charges and ordered to stay away from her, which was easy to do because he has not been out of jail since then. In the days following his arrest, both AAA and CMLL issued declarations of support for Vacker, but there were also people that came out in support of Quatrero. Forestero was one, his uh, tag team partner. La Hydra was one, but two others that you may have heard of were Roosh and Drillistico. And the brothers both posted graphics in support of Quatrero. Roosh deleted his when he started getting heat for it from fans online. Drillistico said he wasn't taking sides, even though he posted this support for Forestero. So... We didn't, again, we didn't talk about it on the show, but because of that, there was talk that Roosh was not going to be allowed to face MJF, and obviously Hesheserro was in that place. It, the Roosh match with MJF took place on Collision or Dynamite, I can't remember which one it was, in that 15-minute start to the show without commercials. I believe it was Collision, but regardless, doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is they wanted to keep those two sides separate, and that's not something that's going to work long term. And at some point, their respective friends and sides would have to be in the same building at the same time with each other. And we already know how that worked out last time for AEW. And because of the charges that are involved in this, things could be much more messy or worse, very nasty. So, in my mind, Vacker signing with WWE makes the most sense to me. It, it, it absolutely does. They are looking for, you know, between her and Roxanne Perez, you know, you can have a you have a, a Mexican American star in, in on the horizon in Roxanne Perez, with Stephanie Vacker being from Chile. You know, she could, again, provide as those two move towards the main roster, if Vacker signs with them, you know, provide some opportunity for Spanish-speaking women, you know, to go along with Zelina Vega, who represents Puerto Rico in the LWO. I mean, it opens up some opportunities there for her. She has improved dramatically over the last couple of years, certainly in the last year for sure. She has absolutely upped her game with her wanting to get out there and make her mark. She's done a very good job. Now, there is obviously the issue of Dragon Lee being Roosh and Drillistico's brother who's in WWE. First, he's on the main roster. Vacker, there's no way. I don't think she would go right to the main roster. She would go to NXT. That's number one. Number two, he didn't say anything in support or come out and publicly and say anything. So regardless of whether he's there or not, and regardless of what he thinks, I think it's a also a much more manageable situation in WWE than it would be in AEW if she were to sign there. So obviously not a fun thing to talk about in relation to the story, but there are 
I've seen online some people who believe, you know, if she does sign with WWE, you know, will the charges end up ultimately getting dropped and, and Quatrero getting out of jail? We'll have to see. But regardless of all that stuff, as a result of Vacker not working, the Fantastic Mania show, Juvia has been added to the match to decide the new CMLL World Women's Championship uh, champion between Willow Nightingale and Viva Van. So there you go. Looks like she's going to be signed by WWE. We'll see if that happens by the time Dave and Brian do a show tonight. In a signing of a different kind, the Hollywood trade publication Variety got the exclusive from WWE, and they reported today that Drew McIntyre has signed with the Paradigm Talent Agency for representation in all areas, joining other members of the roster like CM Punk, Tiffany Stratton, and Damian Priest. For those who love the minutia of these types of stories, uh, McIntyre will continue to be represented by attorney Brad Small at Fox Rothschild. So if you're keeping up with all the notes on Drew McIntyre, uh, with them signing to a paradigm here or whatever it is, uh, he's still he's still got his lawyer there with him. But the story notes that McIntyre has been trying to break into acting and he will make his film debut in the Lionsgate movie The Killer's Game, which stars Dave Bautista, as well as Sophia Butella, Pom Clet Clementiev, I'm doing this just so I can be judged on this by producer Dom during the break, and Ben Kingsley, which is the only name there other than Dave Batista's that I have heard of. It is directed by J.J. Perry and will open up on September 13th. So McIntyre out there trying to uh, uh, expand his horizons. I don't think anybody has done that better since Dave Batista, at least as far as when it comes to the acclaim that he has gotten. Obviously, Rock is the biggest arguable movie star in the world right now, but uh, I don't think he's had a, you know as much as much uh, critical acclaim as Dave Batista has in some of his roles. I wonder if that bothers The Rock. I bet you it does bother The Rock. It seems like a lot of things would bother The Rock, even though The Rock would never put that front out there. Have you seen the meme with him explaining things that's always attached to a lie? Yeah, I like that one. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Yo, Mike Sempervivi here with you. Wrestling Observer Live. I know somebody made fun of me out there. Not saying paradigm correctly. I don't know what it is about that word that just... It gets me every time I look at it, and I screw up every time that I go ahead and try to say it, but it's all right. If you just say enough words, you know, at some point people will just forget about it. And somebody who is good at saying a lot of words, Tony Khan. And this was posted up to the front page of the website as I've been doing the show. Tony Khan has commented on the mystery wrestler teased last week on AEW Collision. A vignette aired on Saturday's show teasing the debut of a masked wrestler. The words hollow.grm and loading soon flashed on the screen during the 13 second video. Khan was asked about the vignette during an appearance on the Battleground podcast recently. The AEW president responded that the vignette is not necessarily teasing a big free agent signing such as Ricochet. It's somebody I'm excited for, but it's not necessarily teasing the biggest free agent signing or anything like that, but it's a wrestler who we're really excited about, Khan said. And it's cool to use vignettes to get people excited about introducing somebody to AEW. End quote. It's probably for Ricochet, 35-year-old, real name Trevor Mann, reported by Dave Meltzer last week as being on his way to AEW, which <laughs> makes sense, honestly, it does. Not only can he go to AEW and do lots of things with people like Will Ospreay, who he's worked with in the, in the past, he gets to do a lot more and have a lot more freedom in how he puts matches together, and he'll absolutely like that, so... He's there for bangers. We'll see how much he fits into any title picture or anything like that. But there are people who I'm sure are already counting down to Ricochet against Pac. Ricochet and Osprey, of course. Ricochet in there against maybe somebody like a, a Swerve Strickland who you haven't seen him in there before. So we'll see how things go. Hey guys, did you love this clip? 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.